few months back, YouTube recommended me a video on how would I learn to code if I could do it again. I blatantly ignored it and then there was another video and another and another and finally I pulled the trigger. Watched tons of them. Well, some promised to make me a software engineer in just three to four months, while others emphasized the daily commitment in hours needed to achieve the same goal. Join me in this video as I try to find the answer. Alright, I have a feeling that there is too much focus on getting a job. Feels like no one cares what happens after that. Let me tell you what happens. One either breaks down or burns out. I personally haven't seen uh, a person who really went from not knowing how to code to getting a job in six months. If you find anyone, let me know and let's have a podcast with them. Till then, let's proceed ahead with the video. Before we begin, I would like to thank the principal and staff software engineers who have worked with Amazon, Microsoft, Paytm, Walmart, who were kind enough to proof watch this video and make it even better. Okay, first, coding versus programming versus software engineering. Some people go as far as defining coding and programming as different things, which they are not. Coding is effectively writing code, and one is writing code almost always to create some program. Now, people might bash me and ask then, what the hell is scripting? Let me simplify it for you. All of this is programming. It is, in its most basic sense, the act of writing code in order to produce a program, which uh, takes some input, does the magic and produces an output. It can be as simple as a calculator or as complex as chat GPT. Uh, software engineering on the other hand is a multi-year development of multi-version programs by multiple people. Well, we have a factor of time in here and the number of people working on the team. Mathematically, you can think of it as like programming integrated over time and multiple people. All right, before you start to learn to code, when we want to learn to code or learn a new language or a technology, we should know two things. First is where we are and where we want to get to. You need to answer these questions. Are you someone, a ninth standard, a college pass out, an experienced software engineer, a CDO, or just an arbitrary person with no programming experience or knowledge? Is your goal to just get a software job? You want to transition from server development to mobile development? You want to become a software, like system software or operating system developer? Or maybe you want to ramp up your startup? The answer to these questions will significantly govern how, what, and when to learn to code. Next, let's take a look at this uh, trade-off, the breadth versus depth. Based on the answers uh, to the previous questions, you will have to make a trade-off here. And the trade-off will depend on, like primarily on two things. First is your timeline. If your timeline is really small, then you really don't need to start from the most basic language of all, that is C. Smaller timelines weren't for a goal-specific learning, that is directly jump onto the language that is needed and taking a basic overview without going too much deep. Well, if you have a relaxed timeline, then going deeper and starting with C language will give you wonders in the long run. Then the second is your current programming notch. If you already know how to code, then jumping directly on the language technology does make sense. Just see an implementation tutorial and go with the flow. But if you don't know how programming and your timeline is really small, start with learning English. Oops, I, I meant Python <laughs> or, or Scratch for that matter. Okay, in the interest of time and making this video a short one, I will provide you with one generic framework which all of us go through from uh, zero to being able to write a software. Remember, I didn't mention software engineer. Okay, first and foremost, learn the fundamentals. Learn how computers work, create a computational thinking inside of you. CS50 is like hands down the best course or the best possible resource for this. In parallel, install Linux and do some basic Linux course. So learn and understand a few basic Linux commands. Then the next step is to learn the basic language that is C. You can refer to the books like let us see uh, or just do some free courses on YouTube. Learn the syntax, control statements, functions, loops. Folks, see, loops are very important here. I personally did a local course on C language before getting into the college, and I still didn't have any idea on what exactly is happening in a for loop. It was only after my first year roommate made me understand what's really happening in here. Make sure you build simple programs on a daily basis like calculator, a snake game, an analog clock, which displays the current time, or do a lot of pattern making problems. 
patterns like one two one two three one two three four five and some star making thing okay if you don't have anything the simplest thing to do is implement your favorite linux command for example open the manual page of word count like wc and just write your own word count implement all the options and everything and it really helps the next step is to learn oops i mean object oriented programming structure because you will at some point anyhow have to do it in the future head for java is a great resource for that head for java is a book by kathy sierra and bird Bates. one crazy book learn some basics of osn dbms well you should at least know what a database is and a few basic sql queries to create read update and delete as in we call it crud okay now there are two parallel tracks from here on one is to learn DSA, data structures and algorithms. You can use this book by Corman uh, as a reference and get some other books for the structured study. The best resource I would say is Algorithms 1 and Algorithms 2 course uh, by Princeton University. It should be uh, flashing over here. The link, link is in the description. You can anyhow check that out. Or you can refer to your favorite YouTuber's DSA sheet. Sweep out the geeks for geeks for the topics that you are not comfortable with. The second track is finally where we apply all we have learned so far and learn a few more things. You can't get away from learning, can you? So I call this track Internet Enabled Software and it is actually composed of uh, three parts. One is the client side, the server side and the databases. Almost every software that you can think of today is composed of these three. And interestingly, at the core of these three, they are just computers acting differently. There are multiple types of clients like mobile, desktop, web, or hybrid. Uh, hybrid can be like either Flutter or React Native. On mobile, you will either learn Java or Swift or Kotlin. For web, you will be doing like a combination of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Plus there are tons of other uh, frameworks like Angular, React, Vue.js uh, that actually do make things easier. On the server side, you again have a lot of language options, either Java or JavaScript in the form of Node, Golang, C Sharp, etc. And every other language has tons and tons of frameworks that make things easier for you like Django, Spring Boot, etc. You also have various uh, platforms and infrastructures like Google Cloud, AWS, Azure, so that you don't actually need to maintain the physical servers. On the database side, you again have tons and tons of options like uh, either you can go with a SQL database or no SQL database and some specific databases that are available like MongoDB, Postgres and a lot of other stuff. Then there are a few other areas that doesn't fit well inside this internet enabled software. One example is a system software developer who works on the operating system like Android, Windows, Linux, Xbox, PS5 OS or iOS. Practically this is where I fall into at the current moment. Another example is someone working on driver or kernel development which is written to provide control uh, of the hardware to the software. Another example is someone working on developing a video game or a game engine like Unity or Unreal Engine 4, 5 etc. Another example is someone working on making AI models for some problem at hand using machine learning algorithms. This second track can be experienced in multiple forms by either doing self projects, contributing to open source, joining a startup or a big tech company. All right, all of this will actually enable you to write a software, but being a software engineer is a different game altogether where behavioral and leadership skills come into the picture. I think all the senior engineers watching this video will agree that there is no shortcut or a fixed time duration for you to become a software engineer. Take your own time, do it at your own pace, think about the long term instead of just the short term gains. And that's all for this video. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And actually, uh, this was it, uh, what I had for today. I hope to see you soon. Till then, bye bye.